I'll give you James Baldwin since you're not feeling me. Baldwin said to be successful in America requires you to be more and more white and less and less what God made you. And that, my sisters and brothers, will feed self-hatred. And you see self-hatred. It's manifest in too many instances. You know self-hatred. Self-hatred is manifest when you are needlessly hard on yourself. Self-hatred is manifest when you continue to settle for settling. You know you deserve more, but instead of getting more, you're afraid that what you're getting is exactly what you deserve because you don't believe you deserve any better. I'm simply trying to say it's hard to live your best life when you believe the worst about you. Preach Freddie Haynes. Tweet that because I think that was hot right there. In a real sense, my sisters and brothers, I'm trying to let everybody know that there is a system that has been diabolically designed to preclude us from living our best life, but to get in our head. And if Jesus said truly that you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free, that means if you know a lie, the lie will lock you up. Preach, Freddie Haynes. I'm about to do that thing because if the truth sets you free and the lie locks you up and you're living a lie, the lie that you were living will preclude you from living your best life and becoming everything that God intends for you to become. And that's why I could not wait to homiletically hop into this passage because Jesus, y'all know Jesus, heaven's hero and earth's emancipator, Jesus, the field preacher from Nazareth who was straight out of the hood in Nazareth, Jesus who had spent his ministry ministering to those who are marginalized, Jesus, y'all know Jesus, Jesus who used the, the hem in his garment to release medicine to those with pre-existing conditions, Jesus who could take, watch this, even mud from spit and dirt and use it to open the eyes of those who had been blind and he wasn't a licensed optometrist. I'm talking about Jesus who could use his culinary creativity and take a two-piece and five biscuits and start up a pop-up banquet in the wilderness. I'm talking about Jesus who was able to halt a funeral procession of grief and transform it into a festive family reunion. I'm talking about Jesus who was the life of the party and could show up at what a wedding reception and the wine had run out and D.L. Hughley says Jesus must have said because he was a brother I don't always do this but boom keep the party going because Jesus had all of that going for him his was a life of love a life of freedom a life of joy and y'all not shout but if you thought about the fact that he did all of this under empire the Roman Empire whose propaganda was already designed to keep the marginalized on the margins and a hierarchy had been set up where even Rome said, what I'm going to do is take advantage of your self-hatred and get some tax collectors, overseers, if you please, from the religious community. I'm going to use tax collectors and your religious leadership in order to betray you. Y'all missing this. But that's what empires do. Empires always know when they can find someone in the marginalized community who is more caught up in getting paid than they are in living a life of principle. I'm going to do that one more time because if you're not careful, you'll get so hungry to get paid, you'll end up being sold. Preach, Freddie Haynes. I just did that thing. And a whole lot of us get sold because...